Hello, um, my name is Hikaru and uh, I'm a Japanese artist living and working here in Boulder. Uh, I do sing and uh, do other things, dance. Uh, I, I came here in Boulder back in 95 to uh, teach at uh, Waldorf School uh, locally and uh, um, it was a wonderful experience. But uh, I have lived in the United States totally for about 34 years now, uh, not consecutively, but um, I really enjoy uh, living here and experiencing freedom. I was born in Japan um, in this family that had a very interesting uh, history. Um, my great great grandmother uh, gave uh, mother milk to uh, Taisho Emperor, Hiroshito's father, when he was a baby. And also uh, my grandfather, uh, great grandfather, excuse me, um, was an uh, imperial court appointed uh, artisan. And uh, he used to make furniture and all these uh, um, wooden objects. And that was um, given to the imperial family and so forth. And uh, so I, I grew up in a um, sort of a bloodline, having um, artistic background. Uh, my grandfather uh, used to play the instrument called biwa, and he was um, quite good at it. Um, my grandmother was expert in uh, traditional Japanese uh, poetry reciting called shigin. And, and so forth. But uh, my initial training was from my mother, and she was one of those uh, Renaissance women uh, who could uh, do many, many different things. Um, her primary um, uh, talent was in writing, but uh, uh, she taught me when I was four how to paint, draw, uh, sing, and also uh, uh, do a simple writing and so forth. I mean, you, you can tell it was, I was four years old, so it wasn't that complex. But that was my foundation. And um, I was not so uh, healthy, so sometimes I will stay at home um, several days. And back when I was around 10 years old, I watched a biography of Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, that really um, inspired me to uh, study about him and also um, my interest in uh, Italian Renaissance uh, happened. And I used the, the spare time in, in, at home um, to copy the masterpiece and so forth. I mean, I am naturally inspired by all the great works, um, great artworks uh, throughout the history, um, let's say from Egypt to Greece, to uh, Renaissance, Romanticism. And it's interesting that uh, my particular uh, interest are concentrated on the European uh, culture, uh, whether it's uh, in the realm of art or music or literature or philosophy or even religion. Um, I developed a, a interest in, in the so-called Western culture. Um, and yet, uh, I, I, I being me being a Japanese or or Eastern, uh, having Eastern background, um, it is in, in interesting to uh, see that um, some sort of a cross culture or um, crossover of a different culture is happening uh, within me. Um, it's in a way perfect to be in the United States because the United States is a melting pot of different cultures. And uh, I appreciated that part of uh, 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 this culture here in the United States. In Japan, because it's a homogeneous country, um, and 
they they have a long history. Um, they have developed uh, some sort of a system, um, and and they would like to. And this is only my view, but they would like to 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 for everybody to not disturb that 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 system in a way. In the United States, you have a voice. Um, you can express yourself freely. Up until about year 2000, I was concentrating on uh, studying of uh, Italian Renaissance and uh, basically Western art. But after that, I started to uh, reappreciate my own culture. Um, one of my friends sent me a videotape of um, a show. Uh, it was uh, a show to do with um, uh, choosing uh, 100 um, important Japanese uh, artworks, and uh, um, they were showing each piece and and, and all the information uh, and history uh, and the background to, to it and. And that also inspired me and, in a way, um, reignited uh, my own culture within me, in, in a way. And uh, what um, I loved about is is that um, mostly in the earlier period of uh, Japanese art, um, they were um, um, making, you know, statue of Buddhas and so forth. But um, let's say um, how they um, made a foreign culture, as you know, Buddhism was originated in India and went through uh, China and was brought to Japan. But uh, somehow they um, transformed what it was Chinese, uh, let's say to uh, authentic Japanese uh, form and so forth. Um, so the, 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 I was appreciating Japanese aesthetics and so forth. And, and I started to, to experiment um, with some of the pieces that I was working to bring in uh, Japanese um, elements in it and, and try to combine um, the Western element and Eastern element within my own work. My work was influenced by um, Salvador Dali. Um, and back in when I was about 15, 16, I was uh, experimenting with so-called surrealistic style in the tradition of Dali. There's so many different uh, surrealistic artists or surrealist artists. Um, my work is often categorized under uh, visionary and surrealistic and fantastic, but some people use visionary, uh, su such category, as a derogatory term. Um, just like impressionism, the word was was a not not really a positive term. Uh, we now use it naturally, but back then it was a derogatory term to differentiate from a traditional classical st style. But um, I tend to not want to be in, in, in categorized in one, one um, style or not. I, I try to, to be like Picasso. You know, when, you, when you look at Picasso's work in a different uh, era of uh, you know, his life, uh, the style is different. Um, people tend to, to, to fit him into a, a cubistic or neoclassical or, or abstract style. But to, his style kept changing, and and uh, um, I would like to be like that, to to be able to express in whatever form uh, I would like to 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 express. And if you uh, see my work, um, if you have had had you followed my work, um, art history in a way in in the realm of art, my style had changed from uh, a period, a certain period. In, um, during the 90s, I, I painted this way, and from the year 2000, my style has changed, and so forth. And I, I allowed to do that, and uh, some, some artists um, 
um, keep one style and that's and that's beautiful and that's fine uh, I would like to, to, to change if something within me uh, say say so the fact that I could understand let's say ancient Egyptian or Greek mythology and feel something about it now it transcends the time and 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 also the geographical boundary and so forth um, I could read the German Romanticism and, and feel something. Um, so, in, in a way, I would like to, to express something that transcends the time and, and, and the uh, place, uh, space. So, 500 years from now, or 1,000 years from now, or um, uh, whenever in the future, I would like to to uh, for for I would like uh, for the, the people living in the future to be able to to feel something uh, uh, or to have some kind of uh, um, curiosity and and wanting to know what I was trying to do and so forth. In my work, I didn't want people to just pass by and say, "Well, that's beautiful. Well, goodbye." Um, I wanted people to, to uh, engage into my work, um, starting with, with, with any kind of question, curiosity. You know, what is this guy to, uh, trying to, to do and so forth. In my work, um, I tend to, to combine um, a different culture, different styles and so forth and introduce mythology or uh, maybe ideas and um, uh, religion and so forth, which may not be you know, only Western, it, it could be anything. Um, it's like a, a collage in a way, uh, but I want to, to, to people to have um, curiosity in, in, in saying why. Why is this person trying to, to combine in certain elements in this way? And, and there's no, no one answer to that. If people can uh, start doing that and having interest or curiosity towards my work, and, and that's, um, I would say, one of the goals is, is uh, fulfilled. In this particular piece, this one is called The Labyrinth. Um, it's taken from Greek mythology. I was uh, inspired by Greek mythology uh, back uh, since um, I was uh, in about fifth grade. Uh, initially it was through uh, astronomy and uh, my interest was not so much in, uh, in the, uh, the form of the constellations but uh, the name of, and the, um, the story behind the name in each uh, zodiacs and, and uh, constellation and so forth. First of all, this has to do with Greek mythology, but if you look at the, the painting, the, there is a movement um, um, I try to create, and um, it's a clockwise uh, movement. And um, any um, being that you see, female, um, represents Ariadne's uh, journey um, in a way. Um, uh, Jung said that, that uh, each person has uh, the opposite sex within. So for me, there's a fem female anima uh, within me, and um, mythology or or personal dream um, tends to represent that person uh, as well. So this is really intimate with my own uh, being and. The fact that at the middle of this painting there is a minotaur, and um, I th that's the, the let's say the part of me that I would like to to conquer or or transform and so forth. Um, Ariadne represents the, the beauty or or um, the being within me or higher self uh, that leads uh, the heroic self within me. The, the Theseus is represented here as a, a bullfighter. Uh, the reason why I put the bullfighter, um, um, other than being obvious uh, uh, that uh, bullfighter fights bull, um, I heard in one interview, um, I don't remember how long ago, but uh, one of the uh, bullfighters uh, 
said that uh, they never considered the bull's uh, enemy. They they considered bull a friend. And I I, I thought of this, and and um, looking back into history, I I thought that the bullfighting may have been a ritual uh, back um, in olden days, and maybe during the Roman era they became uh, entertainment. But um, so th th this is in a way of a ritual or um, uh, I'm projecting onto this painting uh, about how to, to uh, transform the darker side of me or raw side of me. I mean, bull is not human, obviously, and it has a wild element. And if you look at the cave painting um, of Lascaux and so forth, a lot of people um, painted uh, bulls and, and other animals. And to me, they were trying to observe also not just the dark part or wild part, but the, the, the part that we don't have. Uh, the bull may have this tremendous power. So uh, that power um, can be transformed into a positive force. The Ariadne uh, was uh, left uh, alone and Theseus took off and, and later it was wed to uh, uh, the god Dionysus. And this face represents Dionysus. Dionysus was a male god, but uh, uh, one of his nickname was feminine or female-like. So um, a lot of people look at this and, and ask me whether this, was, this is a goddess or not, but this is... Um, feminine looking Dionysus and you can see the grapes uh, representing um, Dionysus as a wine god and you can see in this um, uh, um, vessel uh, uh, Greek um, vessel like I, I put the um, peaceful wedding uh, ceremony of uh, Dionysus and Ariadne and that also reflects uh, the the peaceful unity within me, a male part of me and and female part of me. It's it's not just uh, looking at the to, um, 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 mythology in, in 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 ancient Greece and and trying to objectively uh, uh, put there. It's more of uh, myself reflected in in the painting. Um, this uh, you can see as uh, like a. Colosseum, like arena, uh, where um, you're fighting with um, to um, fighting with uh, wild animals or or monsters and something to 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 conquer that energy and so forth. Um, and in in any stories that there is a possibility of of sadness. Um, um, disappointment and so forth. And Ariadne um, uh, here, this is also Ariadne from uh, uh, ancient Greek, uh, but um, that represents her sadness. And um, whenever we try to transform, there's a process of, of uh, letting go, letting go of old self. Um, there's so many ways to, to die. I mean, f physically, um, we all die some days. But there's a symbolic death, and, and, and that is uh, almost prerequisite to a transformation. You, you have to get rid of your old self in, in, in a way. You don't have to kill your old self, but in, in order to, to, to get into a next level, you, to, to transform yourself, you may need to let go. And letting go always um, have some sadness to it because it's a familiar part of you that you have to to leave uh, so this painting um, also represents that uh, at here you can see a japanese element um, i um, integrated um, i was obviously um, inspired by um, um, williams um, photographs and so forth um, and and he, he's um, like the other side of me in a way, Westerner looking at uh, Eastern work, Japanese work. I'm looking at uh, Western work and we kind of cross over, but this is more of a um, me arriving to, uh, to arriving back in a way to, to my own heritage. Um, 
this area um, is inspired by the, the painting by Arnold Bucklin, and uh, um, he painted several uh, uh, pieces to do his uh, island or Isle of the Dead, um, where you can see the boat was a, a, a white figure um, after death, um, the soul is uh, coming to the island of the dead and so forth. So um, this is that death process that uh, that is um, in the transformation of, uh, and so forth. So um, this painting uh, has a lot to do with myself, um, you know, looking at myself and 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 trying to to uh, transform. Initial idea of doing the, um, the labyrinth and, and Minotaur Theseus Ariadne theme came back in 1984, um, and I started to, to do a sketch and even try to uh, to paint. But back then, I, I wasn't able to to um, visualize completely. Uh, and actualize and manifest the, the painting, so I had to abandon and, and waste several canvases. But um, it was cooking in, in some part of my my mind all, uh, always. And um, back in 2004, um, the fall of 2004, I started to, to, to paint this and I was able to, to complete it in, in 2008. Well, this has uh, different titles, but one of the important titles that I um, ascribed is Tauroctony. Um, it's to do with um, sacrificing of the bull. Um, and also I, I subtitled it um, Change of uh, Season or um, Change of Time in, in a way. Uh, this relates to the to the other piece uh, called the labyrinth. Uh, this is another one of um, uh, sacrificing of the bull theme being used, but uh, um, uh, this evolved um, from a, a little simpler um, image, and, and I wanted to to redo this and introducing um, the new element that I thought it was uh, more important. Uh, but basically, um, contrasting to the other one that had the clockwise uh, movement, this one has um, a right to left movement. Um, you can see in here, uh, this uh, figure is uh, uh, similar to, to, to the being that you see in the tarot card of Fool. Um, it's, it's in a way of journey of, of uh, um, let's say, soul or, or mind and, and trying to, to uh, give birth to yourself and mature in, in a way. In, in the beginning, you are like a fool. Uh, not in the negative sense, but it's it's like Parsifal uh, of a grail, a mystery. Um, you're innocent, and and you might do foolish things, but by doing that, you you learn how to live. You learn how to be, be social. You you learn what's good and what's what's bad in in, in a way. Um, but in in here, you can see um, this fool. Um, um, again, taken from Greek mythology, walk into to the scene, and in in Greek mythology, instead of this painting, that he walks into a, um, a place where a, um, goddess Diana was uh, taking bath with the uh, nymphs, and uh, sh she gets angry, and he was a hunter, but transformed into a deer, and pursued by his own dogs, and and was killed, and it was a really tragic story. But you can see in here, Diana is holding him from entering uh, haphazardously into this situation. Usually in the full card, there's a um, cliff 
and uh, do dog, uh, one dog uh, is, um, as his companion, is warning him not to go further. Uh, in here, there's no cliff, but instead the goddess is holding him from entering haphazard, you see. Um, the central part, again, uh, is a, a bullfighter um, with a Roman uh, face. I, I took it from a Roman bronze. But this uh, has to do with more than Greek mythology. It's to do with Mithra. Mithra was, um, you can see in here, Greek, Greek um, inscription, uh, Megas uh, Theos, uh, a great god. Uh, Helios Mithras, um, the sun god Helios and uh, Mithra is, uh, is uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say Iranian god, but it, it was uh, the, um, the god that was uh, worshipped in the Middle East. Um, and it was incorporated into a, a Roman culture. Um, in its um, mythology, there's a um, sacrificing of the bull. Uh, Mithra sacrifices the bull, and out of Mithra sacrifices the bull, and out of that, um, all the universe is is born. And I coincided with that and um, Hercules' story. You, you can see here, uh, baby Hercules is suckling um, um, Hera, goddess Hera's um, milk, and uh, Zeus is here, and. And, and trying to make him immortal. But uh, she wakes up and she knows that it's not, uh, he's not her uh, son, so she, she tries to, to reject him. And by doing, doing so, the, the milk was spilled all over the place, and uh, one, one of the um, legends says that the, the Milky Way was, was born and was named after um, Mother Milk of uh, Hera. So the, the creation, uh, beginning of time, is here. Uh, and uh, the crow is, is the... Um, the crow uh, shows up in, in uh, Norse myth as well. And, and it informs the, the, the deities, Odin, um, about the world and so forth, but all these um, movement from birth to to maturity is represented here, and here you can see the the adult um, Hercules, mature ha Hercules, uh, fighting the bull. Um, one of the um, twelve labors had to do with. Uh, um, Hercules um, trying to, to, to seize the, the uh, um, wild bull of uh, Crete. And um, again, in, in that part of the mythology of taming of the bull energy, you know, sacrificing the, the bull energy and perhaps um, absorbing into is there. At the same time, you can see the lion and he, one of the first uh, uh, labors of the twelve labors of Hercules had to do with um, him killing the Nemean lion, and he wears that, um, and and that's almost uh, uh, saying that uh, he wanted to to have that lion lion uh, energy, um, so that he can can carry on the transformation and and, and labor. Uh, in, in the relief of um, Mithra, uh, you can see the sun god and, and, and the moon god, god or moon goddess. So I, I, instead of uh, bringing Iranian um, uh, Mithraic sun god or, or a moon goddess, I brought um, Apollo and, and, and Diana, or Artemis. Uh, you know, of course, Apollo represents sun, and uh, Diana may represent the, the night or the, the moon. Um, and you can see here, uh, that's another um, uh, mythology uh, um, of a minotaur. And 
another thing I would like to, to express is that it, uh, um, if I have to, to consider um, um, categorizing myself into um, um, artistic um, uh, categories, and then um, I would say um, I'm a mannerist. Um, not neo-mannerist, but mannerist. And mannerist happened um, uh, towards the end of Renaissance, Italian Renaissance, let's say, uh, around the time of Raphael's death in 1520 to about beginning of Baroque in 1600. It's a very short-lived uh, movement. But back then, um, artists uh, started to reflect the anxiety of that time and uh, um, the body was uh, um, unnecessary, almost um, uh, elongated and so forth, and foreign element that was not there in high Renaissance work of uh, Leonardo or Raphael was introduced and uh, reflecting the, 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 the uncertainty and so forth. And the Venus here that I painted uh, is uh, by, I mean, I borrowed a Venus um, figure from a painting done by a Brontina from, from that Mannerist period. And Mannerist's uh, um, characteristic is to, to make the painting so complex that at once the, the, when, you, when the viewer looks, it, it doesn't um, convey the straight answer. If you look at the um, Leonardo's, let's say, um, Madonna, oh, you know it's Madonna and so forth. If you look at um, Bronzino's work, it's so allegorical. You need to, to have certain knowledge in order to, to, to decipher or, or un understand the painting. And, and, and in a way, um, my, my painting is complex and I, I tried the view word in a way challenge the viewer to, to really study the painting and, 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 and have a curiosity to, to um, research about what, what's going on and so forth. As I've said in the beginning, um, I was heavily influenced by um, Leonardo da Vinci uh, throughout my my life, and uh, around ten, I was uh, inspired by um, um, Leonardo's biography and so forth. And I'm writing a book about Leonardo from the point of view of an artist, not uh, academics, um, and 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 try to come up with a different view uh, of, of uh, Leonardo, different understanding of Leonardo and so forth. So you can see many of the Leonardo's um, um, influence in my work and I directly borrow uh, some work of Leonardo into to my work. And, and in a way these pieces were eventually used as an illustration in my, my book so it's, it, you know, it serves that purpose as well. But this piece is interesting because um, um, the original, the, the central part is um, by Leonardo da Vinci and I borrowed it, the, uh, the part. But uh, the, the people tend to, to, to uh, see that painting, or the original painting of Leonardo as John the Baptist. But the fact that, that if you look back and, and, and observe the actual painting of Leonardo, um, the fur um, was painted afterwards and so forth. And there's no other indication about the painting being, being John the Baptist. Um, so I, I try to, to, to incorpor incorporate that image into to this work of mine. And you can see the, the Greek ins inscription here saying uh, Angelos. Angelos means in, in Greek um, either a messenger or an angel. And, and it's interesting because in Hebrew or Aramaic it's the same. The mes messenger can be uh, an angel, the word for it. 
And to me, it is a, um, an angel of death in a way. Uh, it's androgynous looking, and and the fact that uh, Leonardo carried three paintings uh, um, uh, to France when he was invited by the King of France at the end of his life, and he one of the, th the three paintings uh, was this uh, piece usually known as John the Baptist, and to me this useful figure pointing upwards. And in the original, it's, the background is really dark. Um, I thought of that as um, what Leonardo envisioned as the uh, angel of death uh, coming to, 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 to uh, take him. Um, not in the negative way, because if you look at the painting, it, it's really um, gentle. So I wanted to, to, to incorporate that, and, and so this being is pointing to the fact that um, the word, words angel or messenger um, is um, shown. And you can see um, the swan is here, and a swan can represent uh, the, something to do with uh, um, the process ending. You, we, we call it swan song. Uh, and, and here you can see, um, again, the influence of Arnold Becklin, uh, and I uh, directly uh, took the uh, image from him, uh, the, from the paintings, uh, Eye of the Dead. And you can see the, the white figure uh, going into to that island and so forth. Um, the difference between um, my other earlier work in this is that I have introduced a Buddhist element in it. Um, here, um, the Amida Buddha um, um, is shown, and Amida Buddha has to do with the journey after death being um, pleasant and and uh, fruitful and peaceful and so forth. Um, so um, this has um, everything to do with uh, completion of, uh, of a journey and um, uh, of course the title of this painting is called Angelos um, either messenger or an angel but I painted this almost for myself uh, I, I contemplate my own death in a way uh, and, and projecting that it will be peaceful and and I, I have a belief that the death is just a, um, a transformation into another level. So I don't feel that there's an end coming per se. So uh, as the, the nature uh, represented here, the water transform itself from a rain to a river to an ocean and then uh, again cloud and so forth. That cycle of nature is represented here and we as a human and I as, as, as a person um, go through the same cycle and as you can see this hand is holding up this cycle of events and butterfly here obviously uh, represents the transformation from a caterpillar to a butterfly. So that would, this would, in a way, sum up my uh, being as an artist.